enjoying these lectures. So this is the third of uh, University of Haifa's Distinguished Lecture Series on um, Operating and Algebraic Topology. Thank you. The third and last, unfortunately, I'm also enjoying it very much. Uh, so I would like to thank the organizers again to give me this opportunity. Um, today, I will uh, uh, sketch the proof of a theorem, uh, which is the following. Um, is this correct what I'm saying? Q minus 2 by n2. Confused with this part. OK. Um, so I will explain what these symbols mean, of course. Uh, and um, I'm uh, basing my lecture on a PhD thesis of, uh, of, uh, a stu by a student of uh, Michael Weiss in Münster. Uh, his name is Guppel, Florian Guppel. Uh, so his thesis is on the archive, and I think there will be a, a paper made out of it. Well, the ha paper has been made out of it, but I'm not sure whether it has been published yet. Um, but what is nice about this uh, um, this thesis is uh, perhaps mainly the method. Okay. So he's using dendroidal spaces to uh, to prove this theorem, and uh, the method seems to uh, offer uh, more possibilities for applications of this kind. So, uh, of course, I will not be able to explain to you the full details, but uh, I'm sure you will get some of the ideas. So, this is a space. Okay, you call a space uh, D connected if the homotopy groups are zero up to D. Okay, so zero connected is connected, one connected is connected, simply connected, and so on. Um, this is a derived mapping space. Derived mapping space. For a derived mapping space, you need some structure of the category. So for example, a, a quill or muller structure. Okay? And if then you take the, this derived, the, the, the basic property of a derived mapping space is that it doesn't matter what you put here and here up to weak homotopy equivalence. Okay? So EP, I wrote EP, you can read this as this curly CP, this little P cubes operat, but you could also read it as any of the other operats that I wrote down yesterday, because it's a derived mapping space. Okay? And uh, similarly here. So EP so R map, I will write something down, R map derived mapping space uh, EP any uh, EP operat for example CP Good morning and uh, the other thing about uh, the, uh, uh, this notion of a derived mapping space, uh, so I, I will use uh, uh, the background uh, of, a, of a model category. You can replace the model category by any equivalent model category. So f to mention a simple example that probably all of you know, uh, you, can re you can work in topological spaces or in simplicial sets. It's equivalent, equivalent, equivalent categories. So if you take the derived mapping space to spaces, you might as well take the derived mapping space in simplicial sets of their singular complexes, for example. OK, so this is the derived mapping space in the category of operats. There's, there's special operats. So uh, derived mapping space, special operats. 
namely special operands P, namely P0 is a point and uh, P1 is also a point, or at least is contractible. Now this is true for these little cubes operands or for these graph operands, for example. Yeah, there is only one directed graph on one vertex. Uh, Uh, right. Uh, okay, yeah, yes, monochrome. For those of you who know what this means, so this black and white is... Uh, okay, let's not go into the color spectrum. Um, right. So, I, I, I mentioned to you you could replace the category of topological space by simple sets. I'm going <coughs> to do something I analogous, and that, uh, as does Goebel in his thesis. I'm going to replace... Uh, uh, the category of operats by a category of dendroidal spaces. Okay, so replace the category of these operats, such operats, by a category of dendroidal. Spaces. So dendroidal spaces are like, like simplicial spaces, except that um, they're indexed not by natural numbers or by linear trees, as I wrote them when we talked about shuffles in the first lecture, but by uh, more arbitrary trees. Okay. So these these are pre-sheaves. on the category which I will write omega bar okay reduced of trees okay um, so a tree uh, has edges and vertices these trees have a root so are di they are naturally directed to the root. So for every vertex, I can talk about its output edge and the number of input edges. The number of input edges can be zero. This is related to the fact that P0 is a point. Uh, or it can be uh, two or larger, but not one, because that's related to the fact that I, don't I only have the identity operation here. OK, trees, so rooted. Incoming, incoming edges, uh, none, or at least two, and the morphisms contract edges, inner edges, not the root. Okay. So I will, I will give you, um, uh, and the, the morphisms go from the smaller tree to the larger tree. So it's exactly like in simplicial sets, <laughs> or in the category delta for simplicial sets. Delta is almost the opposite, because there you only have unary vertices, right, with one input. OK, so example of such a tree. Uh, the tree should be closed. Maybe I should write. I'm not sure whether it's closed. Sorry if you said it like pre sheets of sets. Pre sheets, I was going to say that. So, but uh, uh, pre sheets of simplicial sets or pre sheets of spaces. And because of what I said earlier about the derived mapping space, you can choose your favorite. Yeah. So, so, this is such a tree. Let's make it a bit, a bit larger. Okay. And then if you have an edge here, thank you. Uh, there will be a morphism like this, where we contract this edge. So we've talked about this kind of morphism before, I believe. So now I have to copy what is here. That's not so easy. Three guys, one, two, three, and then on this one, two more. So in what's in here? You're not allowed to, to contact the leaf, or not allowed to Well, there are no leaves because uh, a leaf would be some picture like this. It's closed. But I'm not to 
allowed to do anything on the root. Okay. So there are ma th this is quite a, a small category of trees. So, so usually I work with much many lar much larger categories of trees. So, so that's maybe uh, this inner I, I was no I already put it in parentheses. Yeah. All right. So this is a morphism delta e. <coughs> okay. And now, so any operat, any operat p. Uh, has a nerve, NP, and this nerve is a pre sheaf on this category. Okay, so I have to assign to each tree a space. Nerve of P of T is the product over all the vertices of T of P of the incoming edges of V. Okay, so if you don't want to mess too much with symmetric groups, it is very very handy, very practical to work with this coordinate-free version of operats that I talked about yesterday. So this is a set, a finite set. Okay, it's not a number. Uh, okay, so why is it a pre-sheaf? Well, let's look at this picture. It may be a different color. Uh, green was not good. The red didn't work yesterday. I don't know whether it's, yeah, it's yeah. still the same. Um, so I, I have I have vertices here v, w, and uh, x. Let's say so. He, here I have assigned an element p of v in capital an operation with three inputs. Here I have assigned an operation with. Uh, uh, again, three inputs, and here I have another one, P, U, let's say. Okay, and here I, I have an operation P of X, but I don't need to specify it because P0 is a point. Okay, now, s since it's a pre-sheaf, from such an assignment, I have to get an assignment here. Okay, so I leave this guy alone, P of U, and here I can put the composition. So that will be PV circle, and then one of these edges, so this edge E, I had already given it a name, PW. That's the composition in the operat. Okay? Excuse me. I, I am confused. What is the value of your pre sheaf on a stump? On a stump? It's, uh, it's a point, P0. So these are not all pre sheaves, but somehow reduced pre sheaves or whatever, right? I haven't told you what all the pre-sheaves are. I, I've, I've only yeah. told you that an operat gives a special pre-sheaf. Yeah? Okay. So this definition gives you a pre-sheaf. Yeah? So I'm going to replace, so there's a theorem, namely that this, this, the category of such pre-sheaves has a nice model structure. And uh, for, for this model structure, uh, this model structure is equivalent to the, the model structure on operats. So I could, I could calculate this derived mapping space also in this category. Yeah? So instead, we could calculate, calculate our map uh, PQ as our map NP. <coughs> And Q. This Q meant by lavender itself? Sorry? This Q which you don't you just no, 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 no. I have nothing to do with it. So you don't talk about the proof, you just use it. So there is a, a theorem that I proved with Szynski quite a while ago, which gives equivalent equivalence between a category of simplicial operats and a category of dendroidal spaces. I think this is maybe the, th the basic theorem that you, that you uh, refer to implicitly. So I'm not going to, that I'm using that as an input, as Goebbel does, okay? So, uh, so I could write something, this by the, by the equivalence, for the experts among you, the Quillen equivalence uh, bet between Simplicial operats, topological operats, 
and dendroidal spaces. Dendroidal spaces, the there are several variants. So strictly speaking, these are closed, reduced dendroidal spaces. And uh, just to anticipate another question by Vladimir, reduced. Okay. Uh, uh, reduced monochromatic, yeah. OK, but anyway, there are several variants of this, of this theorem. So I, sh I should mention the name of my collaborator here, Cizinski. OK, so I will work in this category. So I'm going to, what Goepel does, so now I'm going to f essentially follow the strategy of Goepel. So, so we're going to analyze, analyze R map XY for any such pre sheaves. any such dendroidal spaces. Well, that's not exactly true, because at some point I'm going to use that these nerves have another special property. Namely, if you graph two trees, then the value of the, of the nerve on the grafting will be the product of the two values. OK, that's called the seal property. At some point. We'll restrict to y's which have the so called Siegel property. And the Siegel property is the following if you evaluate y on the grafting. you get something which is at least homotop weakly homotopy equivalent to the product. Okay? And you can, you can see very clearly how it works here. So a grafting is something like this. You have an S, you have an, uh, an edge E. Well, I worked with closed trees, so there would have been something here, but then I, I put a T here. Okay? So a product over all the vertices here times a product over all the vertices here, obviously, is a product over all the vertices. Okay? So that's obviously true for the nerves, and uh, I'm going to restrict myself to these species at some point. So again, for the experts among you, so s s this, this Siegel condition is like the Siegel condition for simplicial spaces. And um, uh, there is, again, a, a, model, a model category of such Siegel pre-sheaves, uh, which is a left Bowsford localization of the original one. Okay, but you can forget the sentence if you don't know what it means. Right. Um, so now I'm going to do my analysis. Uh, and I'm going to filter the, this category, omega r bar. So omega r bar is filtered by subcategories. omega bar r n consisting of trees <coughs> all of whose at all of whose all of whose vertices have at most n incoming leaves incoming edges okay so you, you have a, you have a sequence Omega zero is just a stump. Uh, omega two is nothing because I, I excluded binary vertices. Omega three. So that's the picture. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, and now the the strategy. So for this R map. This is the R map of pre sheaves on the large category, the union here at the end, omega, omega r is the union of all this. I can restrict my pre sheaves to the smaller category and uh, look at, the, at, the, at the, these restricted mapping spaces. Yeah? So I get a tower. <coughs> 
so what, uh, one way to write it is uh, a little bit more formally. Maybe it's handy to introduce this notation. So let us write uh, Jn, I think I called it, the, for the inclusion omega Rn. Uh, Could uh, Yes. OK, there's only conditional. Is that some contractions are not allowed, right? Uh, operations. Absolu absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So here, this is an omega-3, but this is not. Yeah? Yeah. OK. Uh, so you can restrict an x here. So th there will be j and upper star of x. OK, restriction. And then you can push it forward by the left can extension. That will be the, the, like the n skeleton of x or by the right con extension. Would be the co-skeleton of x. Of, yeah, x, OK. So these mapping spaces of restricted pre-sheaves, you could, you could uh, it's equivalent to see it as the mapping spaces between the skeleton. Or, but, or you could also see the tower as tau from x to the n co-skeleton of y for different ends. OK, so maybe I'll write it here. So we look at the tower. Arm up jn upper star x, jn upper star y, arm up j n minus 1 upper star x, j n minus 1 upper star y, which I could also write as r map x co-skeleton n of y. And this is r map x co-skeleton n minus 1 of y. OK, there are various ways to write it. OK? So this lives in omega 3, okay. omega bar R3, and this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in omega 5 is the highest valence. Okay, so you're allowed to, I mean, this contraction moves you down in the system. That was uh, Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to use at some point that if you have a map from a tree S to a tree T, then it, it, mo it, moves, it moves down in the filtration. So uh, these, these subcategories are co-sieves, I think, would be the name. Does that help you? Yes, of course. Uh, OK. So now that maybe I will, um, I will record something. So now the proof goes as follows. So uh, three steps. The first step is check that the tower converges to R map uh, xy. So if you take the limit, or the homotopy limit, depends a little bit on the model that you use, uh, of this whole tower, you get R map xy. So it indeed approximates uh, R map xy. The second step is to analyze a single, single stage in the tower. And what it comes down, you want to, to check the connectivity of this map, which is the, we spoke about connectivity of spaces, meaning that the, the homotopy groups from below 
vanish up to a certain point. You can say the same thing. I will be more explicit about this, but the same thing about maps. And you have to use that the cofiber has a certain connectivity or the fiber has a certain connectivity. And there's a between these two viewpoints, there's a shift by one. So you have to be a bit careful when you can't. Um, so uh, analyze the connectivity of a single stage by rewriting it as a homotopy pullback. If you don't know what a homotopy pullback is, you can take it to be an ordinary pullback as long as you use the right, uh, the right, everything is up to weak equivalent. So if you use the right model for x and y, then everything can be turned into a true pullback. So that's not so important. Uh, but what, what is going on is that you have something like this, R map x co-skeleton n, y R map <coughs> x co-skeleton n minus 1 y. You can write this as a pullback of something much simpler. Exactly, but there's a Y missing here, as I'm sure you noticed. Um, <coughs> okay, uh, but I will be explicit, completely explicit about this because this is an important step. And uh, this category A is is very small. It, it, it just has to do with the N corolla. Maybe I, I can write it down, where A is just this category times sigma N. And delta A equals, you leave out the middle point, times sigma N. So a pre on A consists of, uh, well, a functor on A, it's covariant in this case, con consists of three spaces, A0, A1, A2, maps between them, and everything sigma N equivariant. Okay, sigma N just a symmetric group. So it's an extremely small category. And you, you analyze what, what are the maps functorial or natural in this category and the maps that are functorial if you don't know what happens in the middle point. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. A, 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 is it a subcategory in omega? No. 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 So what is the <coughs> of X restricted to A? So I, I'm going to tell you. Okay. And the third step This is a category, yes, and this is also a category. Uh, and I take the product of two categories. Oh, this is category with an object. Sorry? This is a cat sigma n is a category with one object. Yes. And, sigma and this is the product of two categories. Good. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, and the third step is uh, check what it does, check what it means. In the special case, where X is the nerve of EP, Y is the nerve of EQ. Okay? And here we're going to use the Fulton McPherson compactification using FM that I discussed yesterday. Okay, so I'm going to use very much that this is a manifold with boundary, that it's interior, it's homotopy equivalent to its interior, and that the boundary is stratified by trees, in fact trees of this kind. Yeah. I didn't put the, st the stumps on top yesterday, but it's the same trees. So 
<coughs> up to isomorphism. So those are the steps. OK, now I'm going to tell you a little bit about each of the steps. And um, in particular, I will be more explicit about this, uh, this uh, middle step, uh, because that's quite important. Uh, now, the first step uh, s s is, in fact, extremely easy. However, you need to know a little bit more about model structures. Yeah? So the, the first step, wh where is the first step? That it converges. You see, R map x and something uh, preserves, sends co-limits in x to limits. Yeah? And you can, so also you can, uh, in calculating these R maps, the standard thing is to replace x by co fibrant object and y by fibrant object. So what you do is you, you prove this for co fibrant objects. Co fibrant objects ca are uh, co limits of a sequence of push outs of maps between representables. And uh, in, in some stage, you, you reduce to the case where x is just a tree. But R map from a tree to something else is just evaluating this at the tree. This tree lies in some filtration stage. And from there on, the tower remains stable. Okay? So with a little bit of model theoretic technology, uh, that's a e relatively easy step. So I will write something for those of you who are taking notes. Um, so maybe I'll do this here. So uh, proof of step one. Uh, take x co-fibrant co y-fibrant in the projective model structure and that presumably means that the co-skeleton is also fibrant uh, yes uh, uh, <coughs> and um, and use uh, use induction on x On x, more precisely, on the way you can construct co fibrant <laughs> objects on the construction of x, uh, then this reduces to the case where x is represented by a tree. Well, strictly speaking, by a tree times a simplex, by a simplex it's contractible, so you don't f can forget about this, uh, in which case the tower stabilizes as soon as uh, uh, n is big enough yeah, to contain Uh, big enough for omega bar n to contain t. Okay, so as soon as the, uh, this this filtration of subcategories uh, eats up the tree t, then the tower sta stabilizes. So that's a relatively easy step. Uh, a more interesting step is is uh, this step, and um, the, the idea is uh, as follows. Uh, first of all, again, so let me, maybe I'll write something here. So I'll, I will try to emphasize the important aspects of this step. So first of all, you can again do induction on x. 
Yeah? So uh, at some, you can take x to be a, a tree at some point, eventually. That's one, one aspect of the, uh, of the second step. The second aspect of the second step is that what is the difference between omega n and omega n minus 1 and omega n? Well, omega in, omega in a tree, you have vertices with valence. Okay, the pictures have disappeared. So in omega n minus 1, if you look at every vertex individually, it has less than n inputs. In omega n, you have some vertices which have exactly n inputs. They're copies of the n corolla. Okay. Now, you're going to map such a tree into a guy which satisfies the Siegel condition. So if, you set, if this guy satisfies the Siegel condition, its value, at least up to homotopy, is a product of the values on the trees. Okay. So the, the difference between what you have here and what you have here is really what you do on the, on the, n, uh, the value on the n corolla. Strictly speaking, many a product of copies of the n corolla, but the, the n corolla plays, uh, plays the essential role. The, the endomorphism, the automorphisms of the n corolla are, are sigma n. Okay? So you have, what it comes down to is, you, you know what the pre sheaf does on uh, everything you can, th that is related to this n, this n corolla. Uh, which is already in the omega n minus one, and you want to know what it is on the n corolla. Okay, so and the, the category A and the category delta A are en encoding precisely this. So, <coughs> so x restricted to A is the following diagram, the following sigma n equivariant diagram. So in the middle, you have x of the n corolla. It's strictly speaking the closed n corolla. Okay. Uh, if you have a map from the n corolla to another tree, S, uh, then S, if this tree is not an isomorphism, this tree will have a uh, lower valence, so it will certainly be an omega n minus 1. So uh, you uh, you uh, I'm going the wrong way, I'm sorry. So you can, sorry, that should be on the other side. So So if you have a map from, from Cn to S, and uh, you, you have a point in X of S, you can restrict it, because it's a pre sheaf to get into C of N. So you get a map from the homotopic Hopi co-limit or the co-limit like this uh, into X of Cn. And here you have uh, the homotopy limit for, let's say, R to Cn X of R. So you have a diagram like this. So you see, if you have a pre sheaf let me tr try to say again intuitively what's going on. If you have a pre sheaf on omega n minus 1, you know all the values on S, and you know all the values on this R, non-isomorphic. And uh, if you want to extend the pre sheaf to Cn, of course you have to have these maps. Okay, because those will be morphisms in omega n, omega n, right? You have for each C n to S, you have to have a map from X of S to X of C n. And for each R to C n, you have to have a map from X of C n to R. Yeah? So that's what I'm coding up. And for, for, for delta A, I have exactly the same, but done all the way here. So let's look again a little bit at uh, this indexing categories. So what can you do if you start with an n corolla? Might be good to do that here. So this is sort of scratch paper. If you have an n corolla, let's say n is 3, the only thing you can do is contract some of these edges. So this is my Cn. 
And for example, this E, this would be delta E, you would have things like this. Okay? So really, this is a limit over subsets of uh, uh, subsets of n of the of one up to n, yeah. Subsets of one up to n. Um, okay. And uh, uh, what do you get here? Well, you have your you you have your C n, and the only thing you can do is maybe I make it a little larger. Uh, you can blow up this vertex to get a, to get a tree, for example, like this. So I have three more left. Right? So you, 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 you blow up this vertex, you get another tree. So if, if you think of these stumps as, uh, uh, as leaves, you, th th this blow number of... Meaning that operation in so I blow up the vertex to this subtree, as it were. Okay, so I get a tree, but the number of number of input edges stays the same. One, two, three, four. Okay, so the category of these trees indexes exactly the boundary of the fulton McPherson compactification. Yeah, in this case, four. So the S occurring in uh, Cn to S, non-isomorphic, exactly uh, index the stratification of the boundary of the fulton McPherson compactification in the dimension, the dimension is not explicit here, but it's the P and the Q. Uh, so let's write a P here, uh, and then f the for uh, n, or the set one up to n. Okay. So that's what's going on. Now, <coughs> uh, so I, I claim this is this is a pullback, and I've I, uh, I've given you some intuition. Yeah. So if you have, if you already have a map, so I'm, I'm trying to repeat what I just said. If you have already already have a map from X to let's say Y on 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 the subcategory omega n minus one, you want to extend it to omega n. So you want to find the value on the corolla, but it should still be a natural map. So that's why you have to take this into. Uh, into account, and uh, and once you know it for the corolla, you know it for for all the trees, if y satisfies the Siegel condition. Okay, so that's exactly th if you have something here, and you have something here, and the two agree here, then you have extended your functor. Okay, so that's an important step. Now, how do you compute the how do you compute the f the, the fiber of such a thing? So that's an, uh, another maybe qu quite standard thing in in, uh, in topology. So maybe a remark. Um, so how to compute the homotopy fiber of the map on the right? Okay, so in, in general, uh, you have something like this. You have maps A, A0, A1, A2. <coughs> that's this diagram. And you have uh, B0, B1, B2. That's the same diagram for Y. Okay, and you know you have a compu commuting diagram like this. That's something that you have on the bottom. And you want to complete it to something here. Okay. So that's really maps from A1 to, you want to find maps from A1 to B1, which make the diagram commute. 
So if you pre-compose with A0 uh, to B1, or if you, if you post-compose to B2, A1, B2, and they should agree on map A0, B2. They should agree on the, make the outer diagram commute. So you're really you're computing the homotopy fiber of this map. Yeah? That's what you're doing. And I want to emphasize, I wrote this down because I want to emphasize if I write it like this, um, some objects have disappeared. So there is no A2 anymore. Sorry? And there is no B0 anymore. Okay? What did I say? B0 and A2. No, but you still have a map from A0 to Yeah, yeah. B1. Of course. Starting with given x. I, I'm given x and y on. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm giving. Yeah, I'm given the, the thing here. But to just to compute the fiber. To compute the fiber. I don't need to know anything about A2 or B0. No? OK. So um, yeah. So, uh, so th this sort of picture is that I'm, I'm going to write it still in a slightly different way, because it will remind Many of you, I hope, from of something. A1, B1, precompose, no. A0, B1, postcompose, map A1, B2, do both, map A0, B2. This is a commutative square. This is the pullback here. Okay, you have a map to the pullback, and you want to compute the fiber of the map to the pullback. Okay, that's called the connectivity of the entire square in this f f good really formalism, for example, that many of you must have seen. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to understand the connectivity of this square. Now, and that, that fiber. I, I want to, 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 to continue a little bit about these generalities. So uh, you, you, t you take the pullback, you take the fiber. This fiber can be computed in several other ways. You could take the fiber of the horizontal map, the fiber of this horizontal map. They will be related here. And then you take the fiber of this. That's the same thing as this guy. OK? And of course, there's a symmetry. I could have done it here. Yeah. So to, to understand the commutativity, um, OK, I should have written it on top, I believe. Uh, if you know the connectivity of B1, and you know how uh, A A1 has been erased, A1 is obtained from A0, then you can say something about the connectivity of this map, and here too. And that's exactly what we're going to use in the special case. So, uh, so maybe I'll write. Um, so we'll get the handle. This if we understand. A0 to A1 and B1 to B2. OK. Now, this is what I'm going to do, or what Guppel does, in the K in this special case. OK? And that will finish the proof. So we're now at the third step.
And uh, my, my time is almo also almost up. So I, I will, I will uh, give you the idea for the third step. Step three. So understand the connectivity of A0 to A1 and B1 to B2 in the case where A0, A1, A2 comes from X equals a nerve of EP and B0, B1, B2 from, from Y equals nerve of EQ. Okay. So, uh, so A0, A1, A2 is, is X restricted to this bold phase A, right? Now, uh, and when I say understand the connectivity of, uh, I mumbled it in the beginning, but you won't understand the connectivity of fiber or the cofiber. Yeah? Now, uh, f for the model of FM, uh, P. Use the That's right, sorry. <laughs> a new red, very good. So I'm going to use it at some point. Um, so for A0 to A1, we'll use the model of FM P, okay, N. So remember this is N, and X is the, the nerve of the Fulton McPherson complexification P, and then uh, A0 is the boundary. This is exactly the boundary, and this is the, the, the full space. Okay, we'll find delta Fm Pn to Fm Pn. Okay. Now, I told you yesterday, this is a, a, a manifold with boundary. Its interior is this configuration space, modulo, modulo some actions. So what was the configuration space? Uh, it has dimension p times n, but then uh, the translation and dilation take off some dimensions. Okay, so attached, obtained by attaching cells of dimension, well, at most uh, p times n minus n minus one. Okay, did I do that correctly? Probably not. Uh, I translate P was the damage. Yeah? Okay. That's what I said yesterday. Now, for B1 to B2, well, everything is up to homotopy, so let's forget about the operand structure, uh, and I will just use the configuration space itself. Okay? We'll use configuration space in dimension Q of N to the homotopy limit over all the subsets of N. I don't know what a good notation for this is. Y U in 1 up to N configuration space Q of only U subsets. Such subsets. Okay? So this is my 
B, uh, it's written B1 to B2. Okay? Now, the connectivity of this thing is extremely well known among topologists because it's at the basis of Goodwill calculus. So, so there is a, the Goodwill has a whole uh, story about how to calculate with cubes. Yeah? This, is, this is a, di a diagram of a cube. So, uh, now I forgot which was the good one, this one. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm going to use some generalized Blakers Messi. So uh, you have the configuration space uh, Q of three points, okay? And so that's one, two, three. You can take out one point, configuration space Q, one, two, mm -hmm. configuration space uh, one, three, configuration space everything with Q, uh, two, three. Okay, and if I'm doing it right, I will make a cube configuration space Q of just three. Configuration space of just two, just one point. That's not a very interesting configuration space. Uh, I'm too close to the board to make a one. configuration space one and then the configuration space of the empty set, which is just the point, okay? So you get a cube like this, but in, in practice it will be an n-dimensional cube, okay? Now what Good really does is he has a formula for the connective, which is called the generalized blakers messi formula, of the connectivity of this corner to the limit, or the homotopy limit of the rest, okay? So, uh, you, uh, so you use, use Good really's formula formula uh, to get the connectivity okay and if you have the connectivity of, of B1 to B2 then uh, the connectivity of the fibers here I told you I wrote them on the wrong side will just go down by this dimension because it's a little bit like the loop space, this iterated loop space. Yeah? So you get an explicit formula. So I, I, I had written down the formulas, but I think they're not so important. But the result will roll out automatically. OK, maybe to, uh, uh, not to lie to you too much, um, there is one, th one thing. So y y th this map from the corner here to the pullback it's called the, the, the fiber of this map is called the total fiber of the cube. Now, how can you compute the total fiber of the cube? You could take fibers, just like the squares, like this picture I did here, you could take the, the fibers, for example, of all the horizontal maps, okay? You get a cube of one dimension less. In this case, you get just get a, a face, okay? And in fact, you apply goodwill to this face. Because this face is something that we know very well. It's just the, uh, the uh, these are just, these are all the, the fadel neuwirth vibrations, and the fibers are just wedges of spheres, okay? So it's really applying goodwill to wedges of spheres, and then it, it that makes everything easy. So I apologize maybe for sketching quite a detailed proof to you uh, rather than uh, a survey, but uh, I think We've really talked about methods, right? Moving to dendroidal spaces, uh, taking the filtration, some sort of Postnikov type tower, analyzing the fibers of the tower uh, by, by, by understanding that if you have the Siegel property, the difference between omega n and omega n minus one is really just adding the corolla. And then tumbling on something which is, which in fact, <laughs> comes down to some known things, really, yeah, and some standard calculations about connectivity. So that's the pattern of the thesis of Goebbel. Yeah. So thank you very much.
Yeah, yeah so this, this connectivity is, uh, well, these connectivities are, are calculated quite a lot, uh, and they're related to, uh, for example, spaces of long knots, mm. uh, space and the difference between embeddings and immersions. So there is, for example, there is a fiber sequence. Um, embeddings of the, uh, I have to, if I do this in English, but for the audience, <laughs> embeddings of disks, emergence of disks, and then uh, loop spaces of, of this space R map EP EQ that I started with. So uh, that's wh where it occurs. And if, if the first dimension is one, you, you're talking really about long knots. So that's one, uh, that was one motivation. Also, as uh, uh, we discussed a little bit with Anton, uh, there have been various calculations using uh, Konsevich uh, graphs, but over Q, and I never use r anything rational. I don't localize. So that's also sh shows the uh, power of this method. Apart from the fact that uh, it may, may not strike you as, as, a, as simple, but once you have all the machinery <coughs> ready, it's not all that difficult, in some sense. I, I, I was trying to convey this. I don't know whether I succeeded. But <laughs> Well, Goebbel doesn't do that, yeah. so I, I know that pe people try to calculate some uh, some of the groups. Of the type sites, so the people are able to some yeah, yeah, I know, I know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. Here it's on, only about the, the, the this what I've talked about now and what is in the thesis is, also is only about the connectivity. Yeah. And once again, I will ask the question: If you replace the M with the M by some modules, so yeah. Precisely about talking. Yeah, I, d uh, I don't know. This is something to try. Yeah, I haven't tried. Yeah. So the theory of the general set is not, not allowed to talk about only the operas, but also the models of the operas. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Ye